डियर स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू वीटीयू ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम आई एम डॉक्टर नवीन हेड ऑफ द रिसर्च सेंटर सिविल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट गवर्नमेंट इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज चामराजनगर टुडे लेट अस डिस्कस द सब्जेक्ट डिजाइन ऑफ आरसीसी एंड शीट स्ट्रक्चर इन दैट मॉड्यूलेट टू द गैंटी गर्डर आर crane girder we discuss here in this topic we are discuss about the introduction part in session 1 this is the introduction part of your subject gantry girder in this gantry girder first let us discuss the introduction about the industrial sh shed having a the gantry girders in that this topic we cover how the parts of the crane will be works and what are the different types of operating system it is basically operated handily and electrically for every cranes will be operated by electrically the capacity of the crane will be depends upon the the capacity of the goods handled and what are the machineries handled in the industrial sheds why this gantry girders used in a industrial sheds means here requirement is lifting the heavy machines in the within the building within the building and also after lifting the machine we are raw material will be carry in around the industrial shed will be used and also after raw material will be product that product will be finished goods this finished goods will be lifted from one part of the building to the another part of the building in the overhead traveling cranes this gantry girder will be used this is about the what is gantry girder why we are using gantry girder in the industrial sheds normally in industry this type of gantry girders and crane girders are used then the capacity of the gantry girders our cranes will be decided from the maximum weight of the lifted by it industrial sheds in this industrial shed the lifting that is both vertically and horizontal movement is required that movement plus what is the capacity of that weight of the material will be decided the maximum capacity or maximum weight of the crane will be decided by the designer let us then this cranes are travel rail fixed on a girder the rail will be fixed the different part of this gantry girder will be shown in a next slides in this rail movement normally this rails will be used ismb or ismc are used in that normally we are using ismc rails in this girders are termed as a gantry or crane girders we are used crane or gantry girders means what is the crane capacity that is uh, lifting of horizontal and vertical movement will decided the crane or gantry in that gantry what is the different parts of the gantry girder and also crane operated in a industrial shed will be discuss in your next slide and are supported on a this is supported on a frames this frames columns are stepped columns or bracket columns in this frame columns normally column to column we are fixing a frames this frame will be normally the column center to center we are taken but here stepped column is 
the AV column will be separated is step over the columns. Half of the column will be stepped or one third of the column will be stepped at that type we are traveling the rails. These are the different types of gantry girders are used in a industrial sheds normally. Then bracket columns that is we are all know what is bracket column in that heavy columns will be bracketed or uh, that is fixed at the some channel additional channel section or MB section we are used a bracket column. This is about the introduction about the gantry girder. Let us come to the parts of gantry girders or crane girders. In that the, uh, the girder span from column to column and has no lateral support in between the columns. That is there is no lateral support that fixed one end to another end this crane or gantry girders. Then the function of the gantry girder is to support the rail on which the travelling crane movement. The crane will be moving horizontally and sometimes vertically or lifted the some goods or machineries. This is we call it as travelling crane movement. Then the different parts of the crane girder uh, can be seen in figure 1 and also the typical arrangement of cranes and gantry girders can be seen in a figure 2 in the next slide. This is the figure shows different parts of the crane girder. In this crane girder that is main part is grab then crane that is made up of stress that is stress girder we call it as sometimes stress girder this triangular formation this type of triangular stress stresses will be used this we call it as sometimes stress girder this is the uh, horizontal movement on a throughout the shed of your industry. Then coming to the this is we call it as center of the column to the center of the column. This distance we call it as span of crane bridge or center of center to center of column. Then normally we are designed this gantry girder in this chapter. What is the gantry girder normally the horizontal movement and vertically lifted by crab. Crabs are used for a lifting of raw materials or machineries from one part to the another part. This is normally we are designing this in this chapter that is gantry girder. This consists of what we will be discussed in our next slide. Coming to the typical arrangement of gantry girder and crane girder in that the arrangement we call it as girder arrangement this is we call it as stepped column already tell, told in your previous slides this stepped column this is this is type of stepped columns suppose this will be column to column will be fixed gantry girder then Crabs, this is the crabs session portion in that uh, lifting of material from this crabs by hook. This hook capacity will be decided in your problem itself in your next session. In that gantry girder, this is the stress girder already told in your previous slide. This is crane girder that is made up of stresses. This is uh, made in IS sessions normally or channel sessions, but usually we are designed for a IS session for that is angle sections. We are made up with the angle section or tube section nowadays we are using tube or circular session. Then this is the wheel arrangement. Okay. How many wheels are required for this uh, column to column is two wheels normally used and operating uh, horizontally 
movement of this crane guider. This is the front view of your crane or gantry guider. In that, uh, this is the hook. The hook capacity will be decided depending upon the what type of raw material or machineries are lifted or transporting from one place to another place within the industrial sheds. Then this is column part. You see this one. This is column to column. Normally, these columns are made by ISMB. That is Indian Standard Medium Beams. Sometimes we go for channel sections. And this is garb. Crabs are used here. This is the crab portion. In that gantry girder, this is the gantry girder movement. Okay, this is the top view in that we shows the crane girder. And also this is the dotted line shows the, the movement on which crane girder will be horizontal movement from one part of the industrial shed to the another part. This is the top view normally of the gantry girder. Coming to the next, this uh, what is the loads on gantry crane girders? What is the loads on crane girders? Uh, in this uh, normally, these girders are subjected to travel vertical loads from cranes horizontal lateral loads due to sludge. What is sludge means? That is uh, movement. What we call it as normally sludge means the movement that is uh, upward movement or downward movement or horizontal movement or vertical movement. This is we call it as sludge normally of the crane. That is the effect of acceleration and breaking of the loaded grabs and swinging of the suspended load in the transfer directions. In this transverse direction is very important how this uh, lifting of material from one part of the shed to the another and longitudinal force due to acceleration and breaking of the crane as a whole. This is about the what are the load considered on a gantry girder. Normally, what are the forces will be taken? That is transverse direction and longitudinal direction, and also some acceleration comes. Some acceleration and breaking load. This is very important. Uh, the material will be not broken. In that uh, goods will be not broken. Uh, that uh, sludge load will be very important on lifting or uh, pulling of a raw material. In addition to the weight of the cranes, that is impact, that is what is impact means normally that is suddenly applied loads, suddenly applied loads that may be statical or moving load, that is important in this session, why because this is impact will be taken considered as an additional load for a designing a gantry girder. And horizontal sludge, that is uh, what is horizontal sludge means? the horizontal movements, the horizontal movement. Here, the crane will be travelling horizontally from one place to the another place. That is, additional of this, we are using a horizontal sludge, must be considered. These are the two additional weight of the crane will be taken, additional loads will be taken. Then, According to IS 875-1987, clause 6, that is page, the, page 14 to 16, the values given in this table, additional load for the designing will be noted here, that is uh, types of load. What is the type of load? This is operated by electrically operated or and operated. In this uh, type of load, that is uh, vertical load, that is then horizontal force, that is uh, in transverse, we call it as horizontal, we call it as transverse, lateral to the 
rails. Then horizontal transit force along with the rail. The majorly the horizontal will be considered two type transverse and longitudinal. Here transverse and the transit force will be considered. Then only vertical load will be only one type of vertical load that is upward moment will be taken and downward moment will be taken. Then this uh, when we are using electrically operated, when we are using and operated means depending upon the capacity of the crane. The capacity of the crane will be decided according to the capacity of the goods or raw material or what is what type of machineries are used, uh, capacity of machineries used in your industries that is very important. In that normally lower weight or uh, lower uh, design we are using and operated that is uh, lower weight we are using and operated. In that electrically operated for heavy weight or heavy material used in your industry means we go for electrically operated. Normally in olden days we are using and operated because the uh, labors will be there. Uh, but nowadays we all nowadays we go for electrically operated because uh, this will be work will be fasted due to the fast uh, urgency of the work and also there is no labor problem to the industry. Then coming to the vertical loads, what is the additional load taken for a designing means 25 percent of maximum static lo uh, wheel load for a crane girders for all classes of cranes. That is uh, the cranes will be classified classes, so different classes will be coming on that case we are taken this type of load will be what is the maximum load that is 25 percent we are operating electrically means for wheel loads. Then 10 percent of maximum static wheel loads there is no movement load we are consider here only statical load that we are taken 10 percent for crane girder only. Then coming to the horizontal force that is transverse that is the lateral to rails means we are electrically operated means we are taken 10 percent of the crafts plus weight lifted by the cranes. What is the uh, load shifted by the crane and plus under uh, uh, 10 percent of the weight of the gerbs will be taken. Then 10 percent weight of the gerb plus weight lifted by the cranes. Here we are observing both electrically operated and, and operated we are taken horizontal force will be 10 and also here also 10 there is no changes. Then coming to the horizontal transex force along the rails that is 5 percent maximum static wheel load here also 5 percent maximum static load will be taken. Okay. There is no difference here uh, horizontal forces uh, only 5 to this is also 5. Only changes in this additional load will be electrically operated means vertically we are taken 25 percent maximum static wheels. Here only 10 percent for and this is the only difference remaining are same for both electrically operated and and operated. These are the this is given in a IS 875 1987 class that is 6 that is we are going to that code that is page number 14 and 16 in IS 800, uh, IS 8, 1987. Then coming to the the various loads are presented in table 1 and they can be seen in a figure 3. This figure sheet 3 shows this uh, table number 1 what we are to uh, discuss on that case that is longitudinal stress this is lateral horizontal force this is towards the wheel load that is vertical load. Okay. This is wheel load, wheel base these are the two wheels normally these are the two wheels we are taken of the crane girder in that we observing lateral horizontal force will be towards the this wheel. But longitudinal stress 
thrust will be away from the wheel load. Then this is the span between this column to column or this uh, crane girder to crane girder center. In that load on this crane will be taken that is longitudinal stress and lateral load. This is vertical load, this both are wheel load normally, generally that crane load will be transferred to the vertical load, that vertical load transferred by this wheels, two wheel will be attached to that crane. This is about the loads on cranes. Then coming to the impact and stretch of cranes, this is the additional weight or additional load will be considered to design a cranes or canty girder. This cranes girder span from column to column, this is very important, this is column to column, that is step columns also there and usually having no lateral support, there is no lateral support at intermediate point expecting when a walkway is formed at the top level of the girder, which restrains the girder from lateral bending. That is lateral bending we have taken, that is restrain the girder. This is we have taken girder as restrain the girder, then no lateral support at intermediate point. Then coming to the under normal circumference, the crane's girder must be designed as lateral unsupported beams carrying a vertical load. To carrying a vertical load, we are taking unsupported beam carrying vertical and horizontal load. We are taken as an unsupported beam. There is no supported on a beam at the level of the top flange. That is top of the flange. This will be shown in a next slide. What is the top flange and uh, what is the ISMCs are used for a that top flange. Then apparently a girder with heavier and wider compression flange in re is required to increase the movement of inertia, movement of inertia of the top flange. That is top flange carries a heavy load. Why? Because here we are taken restrain the girder and also unsupported beam. This is unsupported beam. Therefore, at the top of the flange, the moment of inertia required more. Therefore, we are increasing the moment of inertia for a top flange. We are adding a ISMC or some plates, some additional plates will be used to resist the moment of resistance of a top flange. That is very important for designing a, this uh, Gantt girder. Then coming to the typical sections for crane girder. What is the typical section for crane girder means wide range beams without any reinforcement and may be used for short spans and very high crane loads. This is for heavy light cranes loads. And also additional cover plates is used on the compression plates already told about this additional why you are using additional cover plates means to increase the moment of inertia for a top flange compression phase which improves the lateral buckling strength of the beam and providing large moment of inertia about the vertical axis against the vertical lateral loads. In this lateral load, we required moment of inertia is more for this additional cranes. Therefore, a channel that is ISMC, that is Indian Standard Medium Channels has been used instead of the cover plate to further increase moment of inertia about YY axis. This is very important. We are increasing the moment of inertia about YY axis. The why? Because the horizontal movement will take place 
in between the column to column. Therefore, we are increasing the moment of inertia about y y. By additioning of cover plate, we are increasing little moment of inertia, but we are adding a channel section for ISMC. We are increasing moment of inertia more than the cover plate. Then coming to the a channel is used just below the compression flange of the flange beam and is supported by brackets. This is supported by brackets to increase the torsional stiffness of the girder. Normally, for designing a structure for your RCC structures, we are neglecting this torsion stiffness. This torsion will be neglected, but here for steel structure, we require this torsional stiffness in addition to the this bracket to increase the moment of inertia of the girder. Then coming to the this uh, what are what type of different shape of gantry girder is used in a industrial sheds normally. In that my design uh, normally we are using this type of that is B in India this type of gantry girders are used and also some cases some cases we are using this type these are two popular shapes of gantry girders are used here this is the ISMB beams. Okay, ISMB that is Indian standard medium beams are used with a channel section. This is a channel section that is ISMC that is uh, depending upon the load carrying capacity of uh, this crane, we are deciding the what type of channel is required. And also this is the rail, what we call it as rail, normally rail. In that rail, we are using ISMB sections normally. In the this ISMB will be used. This is the seated place connections. Sometimes we are used to hook the channel and also IS beam and also this rail. The fixation will be there. By here, this you take this one, you see this one. This is ISMB section at the top. This is channel section. A seated angles are sometimes used. This is the rail. This is nut and board connections and also this is seated connection angle sessions are used here bottom also for increasing the stiffness of an member and also additional of this, this seated connection will be give the support at the bottom of an upper of an hour this uh, ISMBs, this, uh, client, uh, this is angle session sometimes seated connections are used to fix uh, gives the strength for your beams. Then coming to this type, uh, normally uh, we are not using this type of, this is very simple uh, uh, gantry girder means uh, we are using this type only beam to beam, uh, beam to rail. There is no in, uh, connection of MC or plates we are not used here only rail to some ISMB beam will be connected by hook to by rail that is uh, we are using this type of connections that is then coming to this one where we are required the horizontal movement is more in that cases we are using this ISMB additional of ISMB sections will be gives a give stiffness to the web section for strengthening of this web, heavy I section or heavy MB section will be laterally restrained by this I section. This, this, is, this A and B is commonly not used, but for designing purpose of uh, any industrial side, we are using A and D. Then coming to the, after knowing what is the part of uh, gantry girders and crane girders and also what is the load on a gantry girder and crane girder, we go for how to design 
a Ganty girder. What is the design criteria on this Ganty girders? The extreme fiber stresses in the Ganty girders or crane girders should be computed considering biaxial bending combined with torsion. That is, we are torsion force will be considered here. Bending combined torsion will be considered. This is the one of the steps. To simplify analysis, it is assumed that the lateral movement is resist only by the top flange that is very important here that is top flange bending horizontally without any assistance from the bottom flange. Here there is no any assistance from the bottom flange. You, you look up this slides here we are using I section to this one. This is the I section normally ISMB is. Then coming to the next step the design bending stress therefore will be fully yield value that is f y by mu m o that is uh, uh, f y means the capacity of the steel that is uh, grade of steel we are usually taken that is 250 normally for my steel that is m o that is uh, we are taken the factor of safety. Then for the moment in the vertical plane produced by vertical crane reaction and cell fate of the crane, the full section of the girder is taken effect by the lateral unsupported compression flange. This is we are taken compression flange normally, therefore we required a moment of inertia more for a canty girders. This is the design criteria usually used. What are the steps we are? That is one to four steps we are using the extreme fiber stresses. In that, we are check the design criteria. Then, the design stresses for vertical bending will be determined according to the rules. That is, what is the rule for unrestrained compression member or flange section according to IS 800 given in a IS code. That is, this is the rule, uh, what are the rule? Generally, we are used for check for unrestrained compression flange that is used for air gantry girder also. Then coming to the next step that is the crane girder are supported either on brackets connected to column of uniform section or on stepped column that is normally stepped columns are used for designing a this gantry girders normally column to column means the moment of inertia will be increasing not increasing that much. Then coming to the brackets are used for light light crane loads that is light crane loads we are using bracket section not used for this column to column or stepped columns are used for heavy loads only lighter crane loads and the stepped columns are heavy loads and trial trailer columns that is taller columns there means we are using this type of bracket brackets are used in this uh, these are the connections this is uh, how the cantic culture will be connected from column to column or column to stepped column or column to uh, that is uh, bracket columns, bracket type of columns are used. These are the factor we are using this bracket connections. Normally, we are using stepped column for heavy loads. This is kept in your mind for designing of canty girder. Then coming to the bracket support for canty girders. In that the girders is supported on a suitably formed seated, this is seated connections as shown in a figure that one and it is also connected to the column near the top flange in which case in order to restrain it forms lateral bending and twisting at the support point that is here 
the support point will be twisted in that suitable form seated connections are used. In this uh, previous slides we are shown why we required this seated connections. In then coming to the next to permit the longitudinal movement due to temperature and deflection slotted holes are used to connect the channel with the column to permit the lang uh, longitudinal movement due to temperature and deflection slots holes are used this is the shown in a figure in that uh, the channel will be connected to the IS beam by slotted the wall. Sometimes this is bolt and nut connection. Normally used welded connections and that welded connection there is no slot holes are coming. Only welding the channel, one channel to the beam that is uh, thickness of welded will be decided in a while problem will be doing that is uh, connect for the channel with the column. Then the bracing is designed, this is bracing that is what is bracing means uh, the horizontal or vertical or inclined session will be used. The design is this taken as 2 and half percent, what is this uh, 2 and half percent of the column load, what is the column load will be coming to the this ganty guider that 2 and half percent of the load plus shear due to bending the shear due to bending we are not considering a torsion under crane load and wind load this is uh, very important under crane load and also wind load for steel structure or check for wind load according to is 875 according to is 875 code we are used check for wind load why because the steel structures are lighter than the RCC reinforced cement members. Therefore, we are checking for wind load. Okay. Then the crane columns must be properly braced in the longitudinal direction of the crane girder that is uh, properly braced that is uh, this brace will be in the longitudinal direction. Why? Because this is the force will be longitudinal direction of the crane girder to be able to take the longitudinal force due to the crane. The crane will be decided that is uh, the longitudinal force this figure shows that the vertical cranes this is the load we are taken this figure the this is crane to the girder in that uh, the crane girder to be able to take the longitudinal force due to the crane. Some more arrangements can be seen in figure 5. This is figure 5. This is uh, already arrangement will be taken. This is only beam section in that uh, this is neutral axis of this uh, axis or yy axis. This is axis, this is yy axis. In that uh, plate will be additional plate will be this is additional plate we taken this figure as additional plate this is only for only the beam sections ismb here only additional plates then here ismc ismc channel this is ismc channel are used for increasing the this neutral axis you see this neutral axis here here neutral axis here but here center of the beam the neutral axis here then coming to the this type this bracket will be uh, the ism will be additional to this we are uh, this moment of inertia towards the bottom towards the bottom of the channel then coming to this type we see this one uh, that is ismc at the top then seated angles will be used that seated angle bracket, uh, for bo both bottom and top seated angle will be used then is uh, sessions will be used at the additional to increase the moment of inertia towards the top. This is the moment of inertia at the top. It, this uh, line shows the 
moment of inertia about the top. Then coming to this uh, session here that angle or both sides we are used then this is the only I section. We are adapting of this we are increasing the moment of inertia towards the top of our session. This is very important your moment of inertia about uh, top of the session or top of the member will be gives the better resistance to this design of cantilever. In the look at of this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 figures in that uh, which one is better means you seriously this is uh, for light weight this is for again medium medium here also this is uh, pull out down to uh, this type of section is avoiding normally this is, is better this is better normally this one and this one is better for carrying a more capacity. We are continuing the next class, uh, next session for the designing a part of an canting girder. Thank you once again.